固め技俗に言う寝技は抑え込み締め逆の3つからなっていますこれらの技はいずれも立ち技に比べると動作が継続的でしたがって持久力が必要であります寝技は消極的な防御を主とした技に見られがちですが決してそうではなくどこまでも攻めていくべきであります攻めることは取りも直さず守ることでもあります Hi, this is Shadi and today we're discussing a master that in my opinion without him there would be no Neiwaza, no ground grappling, no ground game in general and it's a man that founded the cornerstone that people like Oda and Kanemitsu used in order to make ground grappling flourish. That man is Hajime Isogai. I've mentioned Hajime many times. Especially in that trilogy between him and Matae Montanabe. There's also him being the head referee between the legendary rivalry of Kanemitsu and Oda. And this video, I'm gonna detail his life and career. He had a very long and illustrious life and career demonstrations, and his contribution to judo is greatly acknowledged, in my opinion. And Uh, in my opinion, he is the father of Neiwaza, of Judo. So, Hajime Isogai was born on October 26, 1871, 20 years almost before people like Oda and Kanemitsu. He was born in Miyazaki, Japan, and he was a red belt at the age of 66 years old, 10th dan to be exact. So, he was the son of Tsunehisa Isogai, a jujitsu teacher of the Segiguchi Ryu school. Uh, he left for Tokyo in 1891 and entered the Kodokan uh, at the October of that year. So he was around the age of 20 years old when he started judo after a foundation in jujitsu. So in 1892 and 1893, you had a big surge of new students at the Kodokan, those that are considered the second generation Kodokan people like Maeda Nagaoka, who was the uh, teacher of uh, Kanemitsu. You have also uh, Lizuka and Jiro Nango, who is the nephew of Jigoro Kano. So uh, those who are the ones that were taught by particularly the four guardians of the Kodokan, Saigo, Yamashita, Yokoyama, and Tomita. So at the age of 17, he left for Tokyo and uh, he wanted actually to be a marine in the military school but failed uh, to get admitted and therefore uh, he started practicing Kodokan Judo so it was a blessing in disguise in my opinion so he became very passionate about Judo and uh, he became almost obsessed with Judo similar to Mifune and also since he was experienced in Jiu Jitsu as a child uh, he received a lot of harsh training, specifically from Sakujiro Yokoyama or the demon Yokoyama, Oni Yokoyama. So uh, he showed uh, technical progress day by day. He was constantly improving, even though he was being beaten very hard. And Kano watched him uh, and said that he would become a very good uh, judoka in the future. Isogai. Uh, had a terrible mindset when it comes to training. It, it was a bit like overtraining, even for them back in the day. He said that, you know, and I quote, start training first and finish last, unquote. Uh, he reached second dan in just a year and three months after starting uh, judo. And of course, his jujitsu background helped him a ton. Back then, the second dan was considered an expert and could teach any dojo. So, in 1893, uh, the same day that he was promoted to second dan, uh, Kano proposed to him that he would go to Kyoto and try to occupy uh, a job as a judo teacher because uh, he wanted uh, Kyoto to become the second city where Kodokan judo flourishes, almost like a second branch because if you, even till this day, Tokyo and Kyoto are still the, the two biggest cities in Japan, so Kano's aim was Kyoto after uh, he founded the Kodokan in Tokyo. So, like I said, his uh, main purpose was to open a branch in Kyoto and he started to send uh, masters there 
uh, in order to show the superiority of the Kodokan over the old traditional Koryu and Hajime was one of those choices. So uh, Hajime happily obliged and went to uh, Kyoto. He started training at the Daisan High School as a part-time job and he was able to carry out the secret order of his teacher. He spread judo uh, in the central and southern part of the country uh, where all jujitsu was still dominating but with this plan it was the time for the Kodokan to rise in those particular places in the country so the Japanese society was moving towards modernization being progressive and even in the Meiji era the restoration uh, the ideological mentality uh, was like I said starting to become more progressive and it ridiculed those who practiced martial arts, calling them uh, savages and monsters and old-fashioned. Uh, but this view greatly uh, diminished and changed thanks to the ideological intervention of Jigoro Kano and the education and also the masters that he sent out. I did a video about this talking about how Kano's views and character affected the Kodokan in its surge to fame and the mainstream so a movement was born and it was to restore Budo and to restore its lost popularity and respect among the Budokas and also among the nation's government so they wanted to be progressive they wanted to compete with the West but also they had uh, their pride and they had their uh, love for their own tradition and their own history so in April of 1895 Four days before signing the peace treaty between China and Japan, uh, an association called Butoku Kai uh, was founded and it was uh, about spreading Budo and raising the spirit of the Japanese people. So uh, hence why something like Imperial Japan adopted it as one of their uh, uh, organizations. So it was the birth of the nationalist political institution through the restoration of martial arts basically. So. Kano took advantage of this. I'm sure he did not, uh, he wasn't aware of the stuff that would they carry out in China later on, but uh, he took this as an opportunity in order to spread judo and uh, establish the Kodokan teachings in the Butoku Kai. So, in October of the same year, uh, the first martial arts festival was held for three days. It was exhibitions of Kenjutsu, uh, Jujutsu, uh, and also uh, there was a lot of high-level masters watching uh, so it was gonna be a demonstration between Sakujiro Yokoyama and Hajime Isogai Yokoyama was fifth dan, Isogai was third dan and he said that there was a problem back then at that day uh, the mats were not arriving uh, at time the scheduled time and also the facility was not well equipped uh, according to plans so despite it all uh, his Yokoyama told Isogai that even when on stage he's not gonna go easy on him he's gonna uh, project him and throw him the way the kata is intended and because they didn't want to appear weak to the other jujutsu schools and everyone else who's watching like authorities uh, teachers and the general public and like I said he's called uh, the demon or the devil for a reason so uh, he they started to do the nage no kata and Yokoyama threw him just like any normal other kata like there was Matt he was throwing him with all his force and the sounds of the yukemi echoed throughout the compound and as the kata progressed and proceeded uh, blood started coming out of Hajime's mouth and his legs were bruised and wounded as well. Uh, keep in mind, uh, back then, the, the gi or the judo gi was not like today very long. It covers uh, almost all of your limbs, but rather it was half sleeves and almost like uh, shorts. So all the blood, all the wounds, the bruising were very much uh, apparent on uh, Isogai's body and still he took every shot he continued with a neutral face and uh, the bloody demonstration ended 
and a silence reigned in the venue and everyone greeted them with a very long ovation. So this is how committed he was to judo, him and people like Yokoyama. It shows that he went under his teachings uh, and came out very successful. So in 1897, uh, Isogai felt compelled to teach, I'm sorry, to compete against Jiu-Jitsu master Kotaro Imai, who, by the way, is the uh, Jiu-Jitsu teacher of Kanemitsu Yaichiyoe of the Takino Uchi uh, Ryu school, and he defeated him with a Hane Makikomi. And in July of 1899, this is where we get to the famous uh, rivalry between him and Matayemon Tanabe. So, in July of 1899, he became a judo instructor at the Dainippon Bitoku Kai in Kyoto and the same year uh, there was a martial arts tournament being celebrated in Okayama. Tanabe proposed a challenge to Isogai which Isogai accepted uh, in order to honor the Kodokan. Back then uh, Tanabe was a fourth soke of Fusen Ryu, which is kind of like saying fourth dan. I will cover the ranking and the systems of the old Koryu because they are far different than what we have today from the Kodokan. So he was invincible, he was tapping out Kodokan judokas, breaking their legs, and uh, Isogai felt that he had to be stopped, and hence he developed his Neiwaza uh, in order to defeat. Tanabe and hence the cornerstone and the foundations of today's Neiwaza were developed because of this sheer need in order to honor the Kodokan. So Isogai communicated this to Kano and asked to have permission to train with Jidoka Kaichiro Samura who was from the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Takeuchi Santoriu Jujutsu as a foundation and also Kodokan Jidoka with great Neiwaza expertise. He traveled to Kyoto in order to train as Uke with Isogai and they trained hard and finally the day of the match arrived and they started uh, the match. He was in control the whole time. This is the third uh, time they would meet. If you want to watch the trilogy, I'll have a video linked at the end. Um, so. Isogai strangled Tanabe and Tanabe resisted because he was very uh, hard-headed even in his childhood as I mentioned this before he would get his arm broken he would slip out and continue to fight so I'm pretty sure a strangle by Isogai would not uh, get him to tap out so instead he managed to get out of the combat zone and at the moment the referee separated the two and announced uh, an, a tie or a draw so, but Kotaro Imai, who had lost the match uh, with Isogai with the Hane Makikomi, as I mentioned, he was the referee at that day and he gave the uh, honorable win to Isogai because he was dominant and he was uh, like a referee's decision or the Usegachi, if you want. So, this is the third match. The first, uh, Tanabe was almost dominant. The second, uh, Isogai relied a lot on his throwing and th the third match in 1899, I believe, uh, this is where he truly crafted his Neiwaza. And because of this trilogy that we have, the Neiwaza that Oda and Kaimitsu used as a foundation uh, in order to add these techniques, to add these uh, little concepts and contributed to arguably the best uh, ground grappling system ever. And the, the same ground grappling that found its way to Brazil and all over the world. So, in August of 1904, uh, the Budo uh, specialized school, the Busen, uh, it was opened in Kyoto, and Hajime Isogai, wh who was six dan at the time, was appointed as the main instructor of that school until the end of World War II. So, during 40 years, uh, he gave birth to one of the best judokas out there and uh, he was the main instructor and he founded the system and it was everything done under his supervision. So in 1912 he became also uh, an instructor at the Bujutsu Senmon Gako and in 1919 he became also a teacher at the Budo Senmon Gako. And in 1934 uh, he was an old man 
uh, he was around ninth dan, ninth dan, I believe, uh, 64 years of age. He had to, to do uh, randori. It uh, the uh, the celebration was the birth of Prince Akihiro. So he was ninth dan, 64 years of age. He went up against Shuichi Nagaoka, who is the judo teacher of Kanemitsu Yaichioe. Uh, he was also ninth dan at the age of 59 years old. And they did like a Shi'ai and it was an honorary Shi'ai. There would be no winner or loser. So the, the witnesses commented that it was one of the most beautiful and technical matches that they've ever seen. So uh, Hajime Isogai was a very short man. He was around uh, five foot one. And in 1937, like even this with five foot one, almost the size of Kano and all the other small Chidokas, even smaller than Maeda, he established uh, a very good challenges in his life and learned and fought, which is a great feat of strength and accomplishment. And this is what truly demonstrates the spirit of Judo and not to mention his contribution to Neiwaza. And in 1937, he was awarded the 10th Dan degree and considered one of the greatest uh, figures of Judo he passed away in 1947, 10 years later at the age of 76. So that's a very long and rich life. And his contribution to Judo is unprecedented. And like I said, if Tanabe continued to do this, uh, using the leverage and the positioning and tapping everyone out, uh, who knows how the uh, ground game would have gone. It, it may have been added to the curriculum of Fuzen Ryu. Everything could have changed, but uh, Isogai learned uh, Neiwaza and crafted it and learned the tactics of Tanabe which added them to his own arsenal and trained and hence we have the Neiwaza today and people like Oda used it to add to it and enrich it so like I said if it wasn't for him there would be no Neiwaza uh, the Neiwaza that we have today the ground grappling the rolling uh, taking time on the ground very different than uh, being stand up and continuing on the ground so like I said this man's contribution is in my opinion the greatest for judo after Kano and his uh, contribution and his ideology his uh, way of thinking that kept something like jujitsu alive even though it was becoming uh, a pariah in Japan and the society and how it was viewing things back at the time. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.